hanging out. We're doing some cool content. How many broskies do you have that'll sit here and talk about MMA with you? For real. Shit. Like my shit, man. Like my shit. MMA flicks and chill. It looks like Francis and Ganyu may have made a deal with the devil, and the devil has come to collect. I know that sounds crazy and harsh right off the bat, but this video is going to explain how exactly that happened. Let's jump into it. So I was just watching the weasel and he was talking about, is this the end for Francis? And what he means by that, the process that Francis has gone through. Well, Francis put out an interview a couple days ago. I think it may have been with Ariel Hawani, and he talks about memory loss. He doesn't remember things between the first and second round. He was concussed three times, knocked down where he was not himself. He didn't know what was going on. He was disoriented. He was flashing in and out of reality. So he was concussed. And I just found out through the Weasel's video that now Francis is booked to fight in July or they're pushing for not booked but they're pushing to rebook them again in July that they want to rebook them fast you know what let's just go ahead and watch some of this together I haven't watched all of it so we'll watch it together Francis Ngannou has just been summoned to fight between July and September of this year. Not 2025, which is when he should be fighting, but they want him back as quickly as possible. The PFL president has said it, and it might be the end of Ngannou. What I think happened was Ngannou signed a contract before the Joshua fight that he was supposed to fight in the PFL this summer. So like before he got knocked or anything like that, that's what I think, even though it could be a bit different. Can you imagine if Hennon Fajeda puts Ngannou in that Ryan Bader position, you know, face down and stuff, you know, Ngannou gets KO'd for the fourth time in a few months span, Fajeda parading the slang of the king, that'd be so sad. If there's a way for Ngannou to like get out of this and wait until next year or something, I think he should take that. But the thing is, can the promoter force Ngannou to fight during a certain date? That's the thing I don't know. Because he did say the card that he wanted him on and who else is fighting on that card. They're going to have Ngannou versus Hennon Fajera as the main event for the Saudi Arabia card. So Francis Ngannou has a contract where he has to do a certain amount of fights and those contracts are written with certain verticals of certain outcomes if this happens we do this if that happens we do that that type of thing and of course it all is more beneficial for francis if he wins there's two angles to this because there's knocking his dream out of the park and then still getting a home run is what we're really looking at here but what did it take from him what did this agreement take from his life? And that's what we're going to talk about. Because if you get knocked out, especially at the age of 37, 38, whatever he is, you're not the same afterward. And I'm not saying you're a different person, but it takes something from you. It's hard to explain, but your soul may be the fire in your soul diminishes somewhere to a certain ex extent. And that's a harsh reality. We've seen this happen time and time again. I can give you several examples. Uh, Tony Ferguson getting getting pieced up by Justin Gaethje, then starched by Chandler. You guys know Tony's not the same. You can see it in the way he moves, his spirit, everything. It's just different. You know what's crazy though? I'm just talking about fighting. Like they're not the same in the ring when they come back. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't win. 
like look at Dustin Poirier. He got kicked into the shadow realm by Justin Gaethje, but he came back and asserted his dominance in that division against uh, who was that? Denise Saint Denise. So I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it takes something from you. And so Francis was kind of like, he had all the chess pieces set up so perfectly. When we look at this perspective he's in, from the weasel's perspective, he says Francis is taking it very hard. And I believe him. I believe he's right. And he's taking the loss hard because he had a certain goal. And this is a monkey wrench in his goal, but it comes with a bunch of other things he didn't think about, too. Like, if I get knocked out badly, am I going to be able to fight at an optimal level? No. The answer is no. Especially when they're booking you real fast after. In Francis Ngannou's interview, he mentions that he went to the doctor and they did scans on him and stuff like that and he's okay so if the doctor is saying he's okay and then get back to training for the next fight the next fight could still be in like two or three months according to his contract because the doctor said he's okay but no one is okay after this so here's where the devil's in the details they say not to make a deal with the devil, but if you're in a contract when there's lots of money involved, there's going to be devils in the details. I think that Francis is facing some of those details right now because he lost in a devastating, brutal way. And now he's still obligated to fight. But the other side of it is he's rich either way. He's rich. I don't know, that's kind of poetic in the sense of you gotta sacrifice a piece of yourself sometimes, especially in the combat sports industry. You really gotta give a piece of yourself to get the reward. And there's no guarantee of the reward. It's a brutal sport, it's a brutal industry, and it's a brutal business. Any fighters that are at the echelon that we're discussing here, they deserve to be wealthy. They do. Because Everything that they went through, everything they sacrificed, everything they put on the line is earned. Let's be clear that they deserve respect and kudos to them for everything they accomplished. What was the other thing I wanted to talk about? Something else that happened. Oh, yeah, I think I'll make another video about this. But my friend, his, uh, he's a professional fighter, recently retired, and his kids now are in amateur MMA and slaying it, doing really well, but they train every day. And Nick Diaz shows up at their gym today or yesterday. And so my buddy got to hang out with Nick Diaz, which I have some inside theories. I can't come out and say what happened or what's happening and what all the details are because I don't know. But I, I do have some theories on some things going on with Nick Diaz. So check out the video after this one. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe because we're hanging out. We're doing some cool content. How many broskies do you have that'll sit here and talk about MMA with you? For real. Shit. Like my shit, man. Like my shit. Chill. Thank you for kicking in with MMA Flex and Chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell, ring the bell.